Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. So anything interesting happened in the last 24 hours? Hey guys, good morning, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hell of, a, hell of a 24 hours. If you went to bed last night, right, and you saw the futures, again, word spread that uh, military base uh, got bombed, uh, or at least attacked, I don't want to use the word bomb. Uh, futures just fell off, you know, fell off the wagon yesterday. Uh, Dow Jones futures were down as much as like 400 points. Uh, you had stocks, you know, just, just completely destroyed. You had, you had Tesla last night down like 15. I mean, like huge, huge moves. And the, the most amazing part um, about this whole bull market over the last, uh, you know, year, year or so has been everything that the bulls have to, um, to kind of st just stare in the barrel, literally and figuratively, um, they, they take it in stride. I mean, they really take it in stride. Um, and the bull market lives on. And if you look at what the Qs did last night, I mean, just from the time that the rumor broke that there was an attack to, uh, the White House confirming, right? The White House confirming that there indeed was an attack. Um, you had a tremendous slide, just an absolute slide. And, you know, like around 10 o'clock last night, you saw the futures, you know, really getting a little bit better. Okay, a little bit better. And we went from Dow, Dow 400 and change on the Dow Jones Industrial to about down 220, 230. And I, and I said to myself, I was kind of rethinking, because last night when I did the video, I did it before this whole uh, pull in the futures. Um, and all I kept on saying to myself was, I, I think the value was to the upside. But I, again, I, I thought there was some, is going to be some sort of push off the open. I just didn't believe that, well, we were going to open up, right? We were going to be green at any point. Uh, because again, when you have, when you have a, a piece of macro news, especially... Uh, from a volatile area like the Middle East, um, you know, usually things don't go smooth. Usually, don't things don't uh, go according to plan. And when, you know, when I woke up this morning, you know, I woke up around quarter to seven uh, Eastern time, and I saw the futures were flat. It was just, uh, it was a really unbelievable. I mean, it just an absolute incredible, uh, incredible display of buying the dip. And again, I, I say this all the time. The theory, in my opinion, when retail talks about buying the dip. It's, it's great until you actually have to do it. And I, I always said, this is the only business in the world when things are on sale, people don't want to buy. So the idea that the futures were going to be green today was just out of left field. And then everybody just kept on waiting for the statement from the White House, statement from Trump. And they, they announced a news uh, conference around 11 o'clock. Obviously, it didn't start at 11 o'clock. Uh, it started around quarter, I think it was 11.30, quarter to 12. And when you when you listen to Trump's comments, again, the market was up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit. And the next thing you know, you hear Trump say, uh, Iran pretty much is standing down. Uh, there will be some further uh, sanctions and they would like they, that we we would like uh, NATO to kind of get more involved and be a little bit more hands on. And the market like, you know, the market liked the idea of more uh, that at least for the time being. Um, that there wasn't going to be at least any significant retaliation, right? Retaliation that was more uh, than it actually was. And the futures took off. I mean, completely took off. And I, I think, you know, the idea of, you know, people trying to pick a top in a, in a generational bull market is, is great in theory, right? Is great in theory. But, uh, you know, just if you look at all the shorts have been completely manhandled in names like Apple, uh, you know, you hear it all the time. iPhone sales, blah blah blah, slowing down. You know, look at me. Look at I me. Mean, look at Apple, right? I mean, Apple just uh, out of control. Even Facebook, with all their, you know, with all their issues with the privacy and this, that, and the third, all time highs. And then you get the runaway train, right? And here's the you know the runaway train of all trains, which is Tesla. And um, you know, the most amazing part about this bull market. OK, no matter what the news is, investors do not want to miss. OK, they don't want to miss the boat. And, you know, we're we were talking about, you know, we're talking about in November, right? November, 
early December about 400, um, you know, around you know around the 350 area. And the most ironic part about that 350 area was this: this was already a big move, right? You had stock moving from 250 to 350, and I said, "Wow, I mean, this is you know looks like it wants to go on another run." But nobody would 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 even 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 think out loud or even say out loud to sound intelligent that Tesla, you know, a month later, okay, not even a month later, this is, you know, this is December the 13th, we're January the 8th, was going to be 150 points higher than it was with everything that's going on is absolutely phenomenal. But I, I, I did say this much, and this is where uh, new traders really get uh, caught up in the spin cycle. You know, I, I said this on Twitter and I, uh, and I stated, if, you, if you've never traded Tesla before, okay, first of all, you, you don't understand what you get involved with, number one. Um, and if your first trade on Tesla is at $500, you really should reconsider, like really reconsider, take a step back and reconsider your whole uh, approach in trading. Again, nobody says it's going to stop at 500 it'll never go higher. But again, if this is your first entry, okay, if this is literally your first entry in this whole entire move, again, take a step back, really rethink what you want to do in this business. If you're serious about uh, being a professional trader or aspiring professional trader, again, if you see all the call buyers coming in, it's ridiculous. It's, out of, it's actually getting out of control. There, there are weekly call buyers coming in this morning on the 500s, the 505s, the 515s, the 525s. If that didn't, if that didn't get crazy, right? You think about another 25, 30 point moves on top of the movement made. You know, for two days of expiration, a two day rental. There were guys coming in with size. Okay, it wasn't it wasn't just a little bit. It was with size coming in for the June, and again, granted, it's still, you know, five months away, but the June 700s. Well, well why stop at the 700s? Just take a shot at the thousands. So we're, we're getting to the point of just absolute, forget about the word FOMO. It, it's getting to the point of like cartoonish-like behavior. But again, this really does show two things. People are, have no fear of this tape. Headlines are not, are not even, even a, a, a significant uh, component of what's going on. Risk is completely thrown out the window and people are willing to trade at any price, at any level, as long as they don't miss the move. And it, again, it's working now, right? It, it's definitely working now. But again, please don't, please don't, especially if you're new. If you're, if you're a seasoned trader, this has nothing to do with you, right? This, you, you know the risks. Uh, you know how to handle your risk, your emotions, all that good stuff. I'm talking about to the novice trader who's been doing this for three years. You might be right now, right? You might be right right now, okay? But there, again, think about this logically. Um, there's a difference between making money and making money properly. And eventually, the musical chair game, again, we could be having this conversation three weeks from now at $600, okay? But eventually, the musical chair game will end. It will absolutely end. And more chances than not, unless you have God on your side, okay? And God, remember, God doesn't care about your positions, you're going to have the reality of what's going to happen next. And usually what happens next is called gravity and gravity is very, very real and it's fabulous. Um, the most amazing part, I think, going forward, right? And you had some, and if you look at a headline at the close, it looks like another, uh, there was a rumor, there was another attack somewhere and you had the futures really, really come back in uh, and you're like, uh-oh, you know, here we go again. And they're kind of re recovering since uh, kind of recovering since the latter part of the day, but kind of going into tomorrow. And this is kind of what we started talking about four or five days ago. If you guys notice, we're, we're starting to see more and more frequent 100, 200 point days swings in, in, in the markets. And again, it might not mean anything to you, but again, that is a sign of volatility. And again, before everybody turns around, oh, we love volatility. No, no, you love ranges. Okay. There's a difference between liking ranges and liking volatility. I like ranges, Tesla, big range, you know, BYND, big range, Netflix, we'll talk about that in a second, big range. We're talking about volatility, okay? There's a big difference between loving ranges and expanding ranges and loving volatility. Everybody loves volatility, right? Until things get volatile. So there's a big difference between the two. I, I think the best offense right now is a pretty good defense. Like this morning, I didn't know what to believe in. I, I just didn't know what to think was going to happen next. And I said this today at Morning Strategy. Today was one of those days that the market could have easily went up or down 200 points in a matter of seconds just because the unknown, just because kind of the, the murky, cloudy environment. And I, I kind of wanted to wait uh, to what the market did, to, to mark what the market stabilized. 
And you know, I, I traded B, BYND today. I caught a you know scalp on BYND on on the on the washout and go. Uh, and Netflix was really really good today. I uh, had a big big move, but I was more cautious today. I, I wasn't you know I wasn't very aggressive because I just didn't know. Okay, and the, the whole point of trading again. Uh, at least for me, I, I, I don't trade because the market's open. Okay, I, I have to feel safe. I have to feel confident. I have to have conviction. And when you're trading on a 50-50 scale, that anything can go out the window. Anything is on the table at any given time. You can't have that conviction level. And before Trump spoke, we actually had a little bit more clarity, at least from the White House point of view. It was scary. It was very, very scary. Things were um, very spready, very aggressive. Um, Tesla took off like a rocket. And yeah, I mean, look, is it going to be at 500 tomorrow? Absolutely. I mean, probably, right? Is it going to be at 500 bucks tomorrow? I mean, look, why not, right? Maybe 500, maybe 503, maybe 505, hell, maybe 530. But the most important part is, is that really where the value is? So our job right now is to find the, the value. The good news is, okay, there is a rotation right now, okay, in beta. There is. You can just see it. Uh, Apple broke out today uh, from that 301. It broke out at lunch, so sucks for me. I wasn't there. Uh, it broke out at lunch from that 30, uh, that $300, uh, $300 and uh, 60 cent area. Really bro broke out. Facebook continues its breakout. We talked about the 309 level several days ago. Keeps on grinding higher. Uh, Netflix was the one today. You know, Netflix was definitely the one. Uh, I thought the stock should have broken out a couple of days ago. We talked about that 338 level. And it finally broke out, but not before there was a really, really good sneaky entry. And we'll talk about this. Well, hell, we talk about this uh, right now. So if you look at uh, if you look at this morning's pivots, right? I didn't quite know what to do. Again, I, again, there's nothing wrong to saying I don't know. When in doubt, stay out. So I was kind of waiting for clues. So I started putting pivots into the, into the feed. But if you notice. I put in three, I, it was two, one of the same one. I put in three pivots pre-market. Usually I put in you know six, seven, eight pivots. There's a lot of conviction and I, I know exactly what I want. But I only put a several pivots. I just wanted to see what happened. And Netflix was definitely one of them. NVIDIA stopped perfectly at this 242. There was a sneaky pivot here. I know a lot of you guys took at 241. It got rejected again at 242. But this is where you know things really started taking off. After Tesla started really getting aggressive with all the call buyers, we started seeing one by one by one, 340 calls. And here and here was kind of, um, you'll see it here. Like literally, we started seeing one by one by one, you know, 340s, right? And these are all weeklies, the 340s, the 340s, the 340s, like over and over again, the 340s, the 340s and 340s. So you started seeing, again, what we talked about yesterday, you started seeing um, call buying coming in, uh, aggressive call buying, not big, right? Not big dollar amounts, but you started seeing it over and over and over again. And once the stock took off and started confirming, uh, Netflix exploded. I mean, really, really exploded. Uh, this was definitely the biggest move of the day, not named Tesla. Uh, 334 needs to build, um, and it exploded. I mean, absolutely exploded. Um, you know, here was the 330, here's a 334 right here, right? Here's a 334. And once it started confirming and Trump ended his speech, it exploded, right? Exploded. Uh, 338, we talked about was the next level. It broke 338, went all the way up to uh, 343, which again, I think if it reclaims tomorrow's price action today, it'll go higher. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA, you know, there was a sneaky pivot here on NVIDIA. Um, 241 needs to build, like I said, 241 needs to build. 242 is the 52-week high. Uh, 241 went right to 252. That was 242. That was the day's high of the day. I think Nvidia needs to reclaim this 242 level tomorrow. If it could, if it can, it could still be good. Uh, BYND, at least you know BYND. I mean, gapped up today. I mean, gapped up and it was up like you know it was up like five six dollars. And again, second day in a row, you started seeing very aggressive call buying, like really really aggressive. You started seeing call buying today. Uh, on the 90s, right? On the 90s, on the 96s, not 95s, not 94s, not 98s, 96s, the hundreds, right? So again, this is implied. It might rest one day because again, keep in mind, it did trade from that 74 level. So probably needs one more day of rest. But we're going to be watching this channel here, the sneaky entry here in the next couple of days. Maybe it wakes up Friday uh, for expiration, but it's definitely back into play. 
Um, but definitely, definitely back in the play. LRCX, uh, LRCX uh, broke out today and it kind of sold off back off. Uh, semiconductors look really, really good. We talked about this uh, 300 level. Uh, it went right to supply at roughly 302. Um, excuse me, it went right to 302. Uh, letter X, I kind of like. Letter X, I kind of like. Uh, still going into tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, LR, letter, letter X, uh, U.S. Steel had some pretty aggressive call buying today. Uh, the 12s, even the 13 short-term expiration, uh, which trains as one, definitely one to watch. Uh, again, you know, super strong. And again, here's the confirmation. It confirms it can send it, and it definitely sent it. Uh, take on the way up, blah, 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 monster, beyond, again, there's a sneaky area that never reached, uh, never reached, Netflix, next supply, basically 340, that's when all those guys got paid, and yada, 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 yada. So, again, going into tomorrow, um, look, if, if the value, if you can catch net, if you can catch Tesla on a dip tomorrow, okay, um, this is kind of what I want to, I want to go into uh, some ideas for tomorrow. If you can go into, if you can get uh, Tesla tomorrow on a washout into any rising 60 minute in, the, in any rising 60 minute support. That's going to be the value. You, you don't want to get long at 500. Okay, even if the stock goes up another three to five point, you want to get you, you want to make sure that it comes into rising support. It holds, establishes a new low, reclaims that support, and then has a shot to go higher. Again, that's the value. I don't want to buy it into strength, so I want to buy it into kind of rising support. So please get to morning strategy. Uh, early tomorrow. Uh, so let's talk about some ideas I do like for tomorrow, some non-beta names. Uh, again, letter X. Uh, again, letter X is just hovering around this 10-day moving average. It's only at the bottom of the range. If it could confirm 1130, and the reason why I say 1130, if you look at the 60-minute channel today, it stopped right at this 1127. That's why I tweeted out on the feed, you know, look at the 1130 area. If it can start reclaiming 1130 with all that option flow uh, for today, maybe it starts its next leg up. Again, remember the 12s and the 13s uh, were bought. Um, I like Starbucks. Okay, I like Starbucks. You got a nice long range here. Um, if Starbucks can start reclaiming, you know, 89.50, 89.70, I think the stock can wake up. Keep an eye on that. Um, I like this USNA. Look at this USNA. Nice long range here. Big, beautiful range here. Uh, trades a little thin. Only traded 200 and something thousand shares. But uh, for all you guys who are trading smaller size, whatever the case may be, if this thing can start building, you know, 81, 80, 82, we could start a next leg up. Uh, and the last one, I, I want to watch the downside. Something's wrong with Vago. Okay. Something's definitely, definitely wrong with Vago. It's one of the very few names that broke below the 50-day moving average and stood there. I, I want to watch it for tomorrow. Uh, if this thing starts building uh, below 308, okay, if it starts building below 308, hey, there's a shot, especially if the market pulls, there's a shot it could go all the way back down uh, to this 302 level. Again, guys, please get to morning strategy tomorrow uh, early. We'll discuss uh, all the channels on Tesla and Netflix and Roku and uh, everything in between. So crazy day, absolute crazy Congratulations day. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control, control of your tomorrow. trading. Take care, guys. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.